Hello everyone, Basic Ola here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another GT Sport video. Yes, GT Sport, can you believe it? So, Nations Cup then, round five, I believe. And we're at the circuit de Catalunya. Now, first things first, you're probably guessing by the title of this video that I'm not going to mess about with the first race because I am fed up of going over things like this. Uh, and I just know the, the GT Sport community is so good. So I just want to crack on with this. We'll just we'll talk about this and then we'll crack on and show you a cracking race. So as you can see, we're in qualifying. I pause and unfortunately I collect someone as I pause the game. So I pull over, um, try to quit my qualifying lap um, and go again, which I did and it was pretty poor. But that incident there is going to be pretty damn significant for this video. So do keep in mind exactly what happened there. Um, it does make a big difference to this video and what causes someone to go on a truly bar barbaric run of just annihilating me for what felt like 13 laps. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. So <laughs> let's wait for the five red lights to go away and we can start this race. Tracks control setting to one now on my start. I thought it was pretty damn tasty. However, we do get caught up in a group of cars here. I'm having to let go of the throttle which is a little bit frustrating and we can't really go anywhere. So even though my start was pretty good, um, starting a P14, which is not fantastic, but yeah, even though the start was pretty good, we couldn't really go anywhere. And then we kind of get shoved wide. And Bro. yep, there's the one second penalty, as you can expect. And I kind of get bullied here, and I get a massive shunt by this Brit. Now this guy, AX bad, keep an eye on him, because this guy gets a two second penalty, and he brake checks me massively. Massively, massively, massively. Just awful. I, and I, at this point here, I didn't understand why. And he does it again. Okay. Now, after the recording, I do know why he's done it. So he's done it twice. Now, I, you know, I've not reacted to it at all. As you can see, I've not tried to do anything. I've not tried to slam into the back of him. I'm just looking for an opportunity. And I grab it here. And he tries to swipe me off the track here. Utterly barbaric. And I don't know why he did it. So, again, we're going to go through this. See this corner here. He deliberately seems to just let go of the, the steering wheel almost. Uh, to hit me off the track and it's just not very good you can see here again massive brake check and I can imagine this is all he was doing he was just looking behind him uh, and just you know look at that just, just you know he's doing 60 miles an hour around that corner and he still needs the brake it's just stupid idiotic um, and yes the reason he was doing this is because remember the first clip where I accidentally um, blocked someone on the qualifying lap um, I hold my hands up, that was an accident, that's why. So he spent this whole race just trying to take me out and it was just, yeah, frustrating as hell. But I know the GT Sport community is so good, so on the lap 13 here, I just want to show you this little incident here as well. I do manage to get past him, but yeah, he does just completely and utterly push his way past me, hits the rear end and that was the end of that. But I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know... I'm fed up of doing videos like this. I just want to show the good racing, so I want to get this out of the way. So that's exactly what I've done. So this is going to be the shortest part of the video. Just going over this bit. Uh, what an absolute idiot this guy was. And I'm going to show you the messages he actually sent me after the race at the end of the video. So uh, do stick around if you do want to see those messages. So let's, now the first race is underway and we've completed it. Let's actually go into a lobby full of decent human beings and nice people. And that's exactly what we've done. So straight away, as soon as you're in a, like a, a lobby with Wi-Fi password, uh, you just know uh, you're in for a good, clean race. And that's exactly what we've got. So I'm going to start this lap here. So this is qualifying. So round five of the Nations Cup. We're at Circuit de Catalunya. Fun fact, I have actually been at this circuit. Facilities are okay, but the race in itself is pretty poor in F1. Pretty poor. But we're in a GT3 car, so hopefully, fingers crossed, the racing is going to be a lot better and it actually is so we get this qualifying lap underway now I felt like a bit of a noob for being frank uh, and I do have the cones on for this one so I do apologize but um, to say I was rusty is a slight understatement I was also racing for the first time wearing gloves as well so yeah I just wasn't feeling too hot so I decided to put the cones on this one I know basic noob I get it but I just felt like I needed them, okay, <laughs> that's, I hold my hands up, I'm just going to be honest, I felt like I needed them, so this lap's going pretty well so far, now this section here going in the um, Peugeot RCZ, 
was actually my choice of car or weapon for this round. Absolutely solid car. It's an MR car, but the rear end is actually quite stable. Now, as the tyre wear kicks in, in most cars, especially like the NSX and the McLaren, you really feel the rear end kind of step away. But in this Peugeot RCZ, I'm not quite sure what it is, but even with rear tyre wear on an MR car, it feels solid as hell. It feels really, really solid. So I've managed to st stay on the back of this guy from uh, the Czech Republic, I believe. He's in the Audi R8, which for me was a brave choice, because again, I thought as soon as tyre wear comes into effect, the rear is going to step out way too much, and he's just going to lose pace halfway through the race. But I know, fair play for choosing the R8. You know, some people like it, especially people like Titch, absolutely love the R8. Now, I make a mistake here. I go too wide, uh, and that's just, just a horrible race, and I go for the chicane. And it's going to cost me a few temps here. And unfortunately, those few temps are going to cost the position I would have had from this guy in front of me. Now, he crosses a line. We go P2 and then P3, but by the end of the session, I couldn't improve. And um, we're going to start in P12 in this one, folks. So, not particularly great qualifying session. However, keep an eye on this one, because strategy could come into play here. We shall see. So, let's see what we can do in this race. Let's see if we can get the five red lights underway. And uh, what can the Peugeot do? Now, it's a bit of an odd choice. I don't, I haven't seen anyone use it in this one. But I think, in the end, it's going to prove its worth. So let's see what let's see what happens in this one. So, as always, traction control setting to 1. Just waiting for those red lights to get underway. Uh, bogged down a little bit. I'm not going to say it's due to the traction control, but it was just... Couldn't get the, uh, couldn't get the car underway. But now, we'll, now we actually have started the race. You see the Belgium in front of me. He's just gone off, uh, hit the grass, but nothing too dramatic. It's not going to affect this race too much. I'm just going to slowly hit the brake pedal here and just keep the inside line on through the right hander and then the outside line through the left. A little bit of contact but after my first race and seeing how easy you can get a penalty these days in this game, I'm just going to make sure that I have a nice smooth opening lap and minimise contact as much as I possibly can. You can see the Belgium in front of us uh, desperately trying to warm his tyres up. So as we go through this opening lap then, let me talk to you about strategy and what you have to do in this race. So you've got the option of either a one stop or a two stop. The softs and mediums are available to you. You have to use the mediums. So I've decided on my opening stint because I've started kind of mid-pack, I'm not really anywhere, and I don't need to push, I'm gonna start on the mediums first. Now you can do, if you want to, soft softs and mediums or medium soft softs, or you can use the mediums up to about lap eight and then go on the softs, depending on how your tire wear is, what car you're in, uh, so on and so forth. No fuel to worry about in this one at all, you're absolutely fine, you've got an absolute abundance of fuel. I'll be absolutely amazed if anyone manages to run out of fuel in this one. Quite the achievement itself, to be honest with you, if you manage to do that. Now there's a little bit of fighting going up ahead here, but it's not going to affect our race too much here. We might actually do that, They're a bit slow now, I'm kind of caught up with the pack, but it's the opening lap again once more just want to get this race you know I just want to get through without having any sort of penalties go through that um, camera there I absolutely love that camera angle that is um that's quite awesome going through the chicane now the guy in front of us uh, the guy from Belgium he's starting on the mediums and he's gone in the pits straight away so my assumption here is that he's going to go mediums and then soft softs now um, that's a long way to go on two sets of soft tires if I'm being completely frank it's 12 laps six laps on the, each set of soft tires I'm not soft tires normally dead after lap five so He's going to have two extra laps he'll have to do on the softs that are not particularly going to be quick, but maybe he'll, you know, benefit from the other car and it works out quite well for him. We'll keep an eye on him. We'll keep an eye on him for the rest of this race. So, as we go through here, um, this corner is called um, Repsol. So I'm pretty sure that's a, um, it's a oil company, isn't it? Uh, and talk about names for the corners of this track. I'm going to go through it here for you. So this corner is called Sayat. Yes, Sayat, the car brand company. So, so far we've had Repsol and say it uh, for, for Norners, uh, Norners? <laughs> for names of corners on this racetrack. This corner is called Worth, I believe, W-U-R-T-H, um, no idea how you pronounce that. Uh, this one's called Campsa, again this is probably all Spanish so my British accent is probably absolutely smashing these. The guy in P10 is serving a penalty there so that's going to um, serve us up to P10 thankfully. Going through this corner here, we go purple but that's Fully expected on the second lap, you are going to go purple. Uh, this corner here is called Bank Sabadell, I think. And this one, right, this next corner, quality. This is a sponsor, I've ever heard of it. This corner is called Europa Car. Yep, 
It's literally a rental car company. Yeah. Yeah. A rental car company has sponsored that corner. Honestly. And then this one here. This one's called New Holland. You know that brand that sell tractors? That last corner? It's called New Holland. So, <laughs> honestly, this, this track is just... What are those names for corners? I mean, come on. You've got to think of something better than that. I mean, you instead of just having a big sponsor? Absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, we go to lap four, just about to start lap five. Still on those medium tyres. People have been starting to go into the pits now. And we're going to come out here. We're still P7. Well, we were P6, but now P7. Someone's going to come out the pits in P6. Now, we do overtake him, but it kind of puts me off a little bit here. It shouldn't have done. I was a bit of a noob here. I should have just concentrated on my breaking point. But I went a little bit wide, and this is where I have to make a decision here. I have to make the decision of, am I going to fight this guy? Or am I going to let him go? So you can see straight away, he's all over me, all over the back of me. So I decide to just let him have it. So I'm going to go wide. I break quite early here, and I just let him have the position, because I just maybe want to stick in the slipstream with this guy, because he's on a different strategy to me completely, and that's exactly what I did. So we're moving ahead and you see two people coming out of the pits. So I managed to get P6, and I managed to get P5. But once more, we're going to be in the same situation with FTR Alex. Now, I've raced FTR Alex in my previous FIA race, uh, which is the which was the oval circuit, can't quite, was it Blue Moon? I can't quite remember. Um, and yeah, he was ruddy quick. So I'm going to do the same thing again here. I'm going to let him go. Think of the bigger picture. I don't want to be holding anyone up, and I don't want to be slowing down, because our strategy is completely different. It would be stupid of me to hold these guys up and just cost me time and cost them time. It's not what we want to do here. But we fast forward, and the same thing is going to happen again. You can see the Lexus behind me uh, carry WRX in the Lexus RCF. Way quicker than me at the moment, so I've decided to just, you know, slowly outbreak myself, go wide, get a nice exit, but again, just stick on the back of him. There's, there's absolutely no point fighting this, guys. Different strategies. It'd just be stupid of me to do it. So that was my decision. So I may have lost... Uh, a few positions on that lap I guess you could technically say I lost two positions but I'm not going to think of it like that I'm going to think of it as I need to get myself onto lap 8 which is exactly what I've done here um, and you see there's another guy coming out of the pits there so do bear in mind even though we are P6 currently we have not pitted so this is not our theoretical position this is not where we are on track as soon as we pit that's when we're going to realise exactly where we are. Now on lap 8 here, I start thinking to myself, this Czech guy, I've been fighting with him before, he's probably going to go in the pits this lap, so I'm going to try and defend from him if I can. But honestly, he makes a fantastic move up the inside. I try to retaliate, but that's how it's done, folks. That is how it's done. He was on the left, straight over to the right, outbreaked me, perfect breaking point. Gets the move done. No complaints from me. I, could, I don't think I could have done much there. Just fantastic overtake. So, uh, massive shout out to that guy in the hour eight. He did a fantastic job. And I feel sometimes as GT Sport YouTubers, we don't we don't give other players enough shout outs or, or compliments for the race. And we we just we focus on bad driving to try and get views. And we should stop doing that. We should be looking at stuff like that and really compliment people who do great moves on on us. Which is exactly what the Spaniard does as well. So he goes alongside me. Uh, just outbreaks me. I try and do the switch back. Um, can't quite pull it off. We're side by side, but yet again, I think better of it. And I let him have the inside of that corner. Um, and yeah, we drop down to P8. But once again, it's it's not a major issue. It's not at all. So we're in P8 now. Uh, going through this tricky section here. Um, Chicane RACC. This is, again, could it be a breakdown company sponsor? I don't know. I don't want to say. So as you can see, yeah, I was right. The Czech Republic guy has gone in the pits now. Um, I do believe he pitted early. I'm not quite sure, but I just had that feeling he was going to go in the pits on this lap. So, yeah, so we decided to pit lap eight. Now, we're just going to go on a soft tyres now. So this is just going to be a, you know, run and gun all the way to the end. Maximum pace. What can we do with the tyres? So we've used up half a tank of fuel now. So, unfortunately as well, the Czech Republic guy got a half second penalty. So, yeah, I'm going to be gunning now. So he serves his half second penalty, and that puts us on the back of um, these group of cars here so there's about five people here so if we play our cards right p8 could be up for grabs now we did start in p12 so that's not too shabby the Peugeot has served me well so far it's felt really good and on these soft tires it feels quick really really quick so this guy in front of us uh gab is fighting with wi-fi password so i'm just going to see if i can get any pickings here 
at all. And the Lexus, as it just potentially try and uh, fly past there, um, just covers it off. We've got one guy going to pitch, we actually got two. So that could actually promote us up to P10. As we go across here, where's that going to put us? Uh, I can't see him coming out, but that actually, oh, okay. That does keep us in P12 there, because we, we gain the positions as they went in there. Okay, that's not, that's not too bad, that's not too bad. Okay, right, first corner then. This corner's called Elf, strangely enough. Don't ask me why, I really, really don't know. And this long right-hand corner, it's called Renault. Yeah. Yeah. I was shocked by the names of these corners. I, I don't know, normally racing corners, uh, you know, corners of tracks are named after famous F1 drivers or, or whatnot, but um, the Sp <laughs> Circuit de Catalunya, it's just, yeah, it <laughs> it's just brands, it, that's all it is, it's just sponsors, it's people have just bought it, uh, and yeah, unfortunately, whether that's down to just a poor racetrack and not many great races, not many great races, so they can't really name it after uh, racing drivers or whatnot, I'm going to go with that, to be honest with you, it's, it's not the greatest greatest racetrack in the world is that I don't think many people like it it's just I don't think it's particularly great anyways all the way on the back of this Lexus now he's lost a little strip slip stream of Wi-Fi password he goes to the right I'm gonna go to the left I'm just gonna adjust my braking as we go into this corner and we managed to get a nice move up the inside there I don't think he fought that too much so um, a big shout out to him as well thank you because he, he gave me the space there he realized um, that position was ine inevitably going to be mine. In fact, I had the soft tyres on. I think he probably realised um, I did have the pace. On the back of Wi-Fi password then, very, very brave for going in the Alfa Romeo 4C. I'm not quite sure what his thought process was here, but as you're going to see, this should be easy picking. We cross the line with 144.2. Not too shabby considering we're, we're going through traffic as we're uh, doing this lap. We just go side by side. Uh, with Wi-Fi password gets ourselves up to P9. Lovely stuff. And we've got P8 in front of us. Maybe we can use the soft tyres. Now I'm going to fast forward it here because something happens up here. A little miracle for your boy, basic Ollie. You can see these three guys are fighting and I don't know what the hell happened. They seem to go three wide. There's two people off. So we've got a guy, a Dutch guy, a Croatian guy. He's gone off. Booby Racing comes back, but he just can't quite defend the position. And he's got dirty tyres, so he's not going to be able to retaliate. Those are two free positions. So that was an early Christmas present for your boy and for Carrie WRX up ahead in the Lexus. So we've gained two. And I was wondering how big the penalty was for the Italian, or the guy from Portugal here, I should say, and it was massive. So that puts us up to P6 now. So this whole, you know, doing the alternative strategy, picking the Peugeot, looking after the tyres and just staying clean has really, really worked out well for us in this one. And I'm super, super pleased. Uh, and we go to lap 12. Carry again, just um, just gives us the position in a way. Didn't fight it too much. And again, I like it because I think again, he's probably thinking of the bigger picture. He sees Booby behind us very quick, was in front of us on pace, and just lets us go. And amazingly, because of that, we managed to keep it clean, work together, and we cross the line in P5, and Carry finishes in P6. So a fantastic result in the end, and some really, really good racing really really good racing so I hope you enjoyed that yes the video got off to a rocky start um, <laughs> with, some, with some of the um, incidents shall we say but I just wanted to um, I didn't want to just do a video on that guy because I want to show that this game it, it has fantastic racing it really does it really does so we got P5 up seven positions really good race for us 245 points in the bag so let's just quickly recap with this guy in the first thing so he said so I sent him a message saying you do realize it wasn't on purpose. Uh, I didn't know you was there, so my bad. I apologise. Um, but what you did was utterly barbaric, ruining my race and others because you're annoyed. Message me instead and don't be a dick. And then he came back with, in my opinion, AS plus players. to be aware of their surroundings. And in the future, if you're going to retire in the qualifying lap, make sure you're off the racing line, which is fair enough. Uh, I thought I was, but as I paused it, it kind of put me back on there. Uh, and then, yeah, that whole celebrity line, I mean, could not include it, could I? <laughs> could not include it content gold mine that is but uh yeah i don't i don't think yeah i just think in all honesty maybe he was just reacting a bit badly he's maybe a bit hot-headed i'm sure he regrets it but yeah just barbaric utterly barbaric but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed it and more importantly i know christmas is just around the corner so um merry christmas happy holidays and uh yeah happy new year i'll catch you for the next one guys take care ta-da